They're lying to you. These universities, boot camps, and institutions are not telling you the whole truth. Maybe lying is a harsh word, but the reality is that there's tons of confusion and uncertainty around the software engineering space. And not many seem to clarify it. Which is why today, I want to tell you 10 raw truths about being a software engineer. No sugarcoating, no romanticizing, just the raw truth. Let's get into them. Truth number one, software engineering is not a dream job. Now before you start spamming comments down below, let me explain. Working as a software engineer is work, and quite frankly, it's very hard work. At the end of the day, this role is just like anything else, a means for you to be able to pay your bills, afford to live, and have some kind of purpose. But sometimes we forget that. We forget that this career choice occasionally has a hard work-life balance, that it can be a stressful environment, that most of the time we're not even working on something we actually love. We forget that most of the time it's tedious tasks, regular meetings, and a constant fear of being inadequate. With that being said, I still would never choose to quit programming. I simply enjoy it too much. But it's important to differentiate that it's not a dream job no matter what anybody tries to tell you. Truth number two, most people don't want innovation in this industry. Now this one can be a hard pill to swallow, but the fact of the matter is that most of the time companies are looking for cheap wins. Most companies in this industry want to stick to their tried and true methods, where they can increase profit margin, decrease their running cost, all while doing this in an expected manner. Key word, expected. Unfortunately, innovation and unexpected go hand in hand, which is why companies steer clear of that for the most part. Now, this doesn't mean that you should just lose hope and not even try to be innovative. All I'm saying is that if you have a great idea, expect mostly negative feedback and brace yourself for an uphill battle. But as they say, if you believe in something, believe in it all the way. Truth number three, incompetence in software engineering is no joke. In this industry, you will deal with some people that just don't know what they're doing, to put it nicely. Now, this isn't always someone on your team. It can also be a manager at a partner company or some C-level executive on the client side that just hinders the process as a whole, which is frustrating and tedious to work around. Quite frankly, learning to deal with incompetence is a skill all on its own. Obviously, you never want to be rude or distasteful, so the best way to navigate a situation like this is to be proactive, like seeking out additional resources, delegating tasks to more sufficient workers, or even just having an honest conversation with them. Just remember to keep it civil. Truth number four, you will work with uncertainty most of the time. You see, people nowadays don't really know what they want, and when they do, they typically disregard asking the important questions, like is this possible, is it practical, and so on. And it's not just people. Sometimes you're questioning a new technology that you're using or a third party provider that is new to the project. I think there's a big misconception in this industry regarding processes. What I mean by that is that it's not as smooth as you think. Your product manager doesn't just give you perfect instructions and guidelines when handing you a task. It's never as simple as grabbing the instructions, coding it, and that's it. Everyone's happy. Most of the time, you will spend weeks gathering the requirements and figuring out what needs to be done. Sometimes you will even be talking to developers on the third party side and even seeing if the whole thing is feasible. Just to go back to the stakeholders to tell them that their idea is not going to work. At least not like this. And that's when you present the other ways that it may be possible. Hopefully you're starting to see why I said that uncertainty is a real thing in software engineering. Truth number five, you don't know very much at all, so never stop learning. Personally, this one was by far the hardest truth I had to come to. I don't know if I was just being young and naive, but I had this assumption that I would reach a point where I knew it all, and I can take my foot off the gas pedal. But that's so far from the truth. There are so many different libraries, frameworks, packages, and languages out there that it's literally impossible to know it all. So learn to embrace it, because there will always be something new to learn. And in a way, that's part of the reason why we fell in love with this in the first place, because we're lifelong learners. Truth number six, writing documentation is not prioritized as much as it should be. I don't know if it's just me, but when I see a code that is well organized, maintained, and documented, I get this warm feeling inside. Call it happiness, hope, or whatever you would like. Unfortunately, more often than not, you will be dealing with code where the first thing that pops into your head when reading it is what were these developers thinking. What makes it even more difficult is that this to me is one of those skills that you really can't teach. Don't get me wrong, you can learn good principles, aim to write dry code, but without some personal experience, it's really hard to dial this in. 
But don't you worry, because when you start dealing with legacy code that makes no damn sense, you will start to see how having great documentation and writing easy to understand code will pay dividends in the long haul. Truth number seven, you'll rarely ever write something from scratch. When you're at a university or a bootcamp, you're building these projects that are 200 to 400 lines of code, where you're the main contributor and you work on the entirety of the project from start to finish. Well, let me tell you, that is not how it works in the real world. Most of the time, you will be working on a code base with hundreds of thousands of lines of code, where you get stuck wondering what were your colleagues smoking when they wrote this code. You also may be thinking that the feature you will be adding onto the project will probably be big, flashy, and cool to work on. No, it won't. Most of the time, you will be doing some patchwork on a bug where you write 10 lines of code or so and wait for the next fire to put out. Truth number eight, great software engineers think just like designers. Surprised? Don't be. You see, one thing that I love about designers is the emphasis that they put on the user. Every decision that they're making when working on a project is to please the users of such project. It's not exactly the same as a software engineer, but if you really want to go above and beyond, you have to develop this mindset. Whether it's an external API, user interface, or any other interface, you have to consider who will be using it, how will it be used, why will it be used, and why is it important to your users. When you ask yourself these questions, you keep your users in mind, which leads to better user experience as a whole. Truth number nine, technical debt is real. For those that don't know, technical debt is when a company does not fix a problem properly that will come to bite them in the ass later. This is typically done for time's sake. Maybe there is a close deadline coming up or they simply don't want to handle it at that moment. Why is this important? Because you as a developer will be affected by this mostly. Instead of focusing on growth by working on new features, you will be putting out fires left and right from things that may have happened before you even started working at the company. And the big issue is that technical debt has a chain reaction, and it can be an entire hurdle for the team for months or even years on end. And finally, truth number 10, not all meetings are bad. If no one has told you yet, I will gladly be the first. As a software engineer, you will be attending lots of meetings. Sometimes you get lucky with just one stand-up per day, or you may have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back meetings throughout your day. And although you may rather be writing code and actually using those skills you spent years learning, I'm here to tell you that most of the time, these are very necessary. Meetings keep the entire team aligned. They ensure that everyone is focused on what they should be focused on. And although you may not think so, it's important that you have an understanding on how other departments are moving and what is going on with them in general. Has the quality assurance team had any major complaints or issues? Is the marketing team caught up on timeline updates? Are all stakeholders involved happy with the way the feature is progressing? Point is that it's all interconnected and meetings are an essential part of how information is shared. As you can see, there is more to this than meets the eye but I'm hoping this helps shed some light on some of the things that are simply not spoken about enough. If you would like to see more truths unveiled in software engineering, then hit that like button and drop us a comment. It really helps us out. But that's it for now, and until next time.